Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Bidolf. There I am, sat at my old familiar desk, just like I am today, ready to show you how to do a drawing. And look, this is the brand new Draw with Rob activity book. It's not even out yet at the time of recording. A week or two to go till it comes out. It's called Amazing Animals and as you can see, it's full of lots of fun animals. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'll show you inside the book a little bit more. So do that, do stick around and have a look inside this book, but I think you're gonna like it. Right, as I said, my name is Rob Biddulph. I'm a children's author and illustrator. Maybe you've seen some of my books before. Have you seen this one? It's called Kevin. And it's all about a little boy called Sid who has an imaginary friend called Kevin. And this is him covered in vanilla colored fur with pink spots. He's only got one tooth, this great big chap. And what Sid does is every time he gets in trouble, he blames it on Kevin here who is, is his imaginary friend that nobody else can see. But then he learns a bit of a lesson when the roles get reversed. And it's a super fun story that I am very proud of. Maybe you've seen my first chapter book, which is called Peanut Jones, about this girl called Peanut who finds a magic pencil. And she realizes that whatever she draws with that pencil, look, this is the first time she realizes it. She draws a little flower in a vase and she puts it up on her wall. And then when she wakes up the next morning, the flower has wilted. So she realizes that whatever she draws with this amazing pencil, it comes to life. So one day she draws a door and she walks through and she finds herself in a, an illustrated city called Chroma, where everything inside it is drawn, is an illustration. So look, she meets all sorts of characters, including kind of cute pandas. She meets, hang on, let me show you this. Look, superheroes, all sorts of things, and her and her friends have lots of amazing adventures. Look, they dress up as robots at one point. And maybe I shouldn't go too near the end. I don't want to show you any spoilers. But look, that's the illustrated city. And they meet birds and ink. Oh, it's all sorts of things. There's an ink storm they run through. Anyway, trust me, it's an exciting story. <laughs> right, but we are here today, as per usual, to draw a picture together. And I thought, right, what can we draw today? Because we've drawn lots of animals together. So here we go, here's my book, Amazing Animals. We've drawn lots of animals together. And I thought I'd show you how to draw an animal that is inside this book, but one that we, obviously, one that we haven't drawn before. And one, there's lots of draw-alongs in this book. Look, we've got leopards, and we've got whales, we've got all sorts of things. But one of the animals in here, which is one of my favorites, I haven't done a draw-along for inside the book. So I thought I'd show you how to do that today on video. Now this is one of my favourite spreads in the book, it's called It's a Wild World and it's got a map of the world and it's got lots of animals from all over the world and it shows you where they all come from. So I thought I'd show you today how to draw one of these guys and we're going to draw a red panda. Now this red panda, as you can see, they are found, red pandas are found in the far east of the world. So sort of the eastern Himalayas region, places like Nepal and central and southwest China you can find these guys and they're called red pandas but they're not actually related to the giant panda so the black and white panda that we know now we have already done a panda video haven't we video number 21 i showed you how to draw a panda dressed in a football kit i think which is rather strange actually <laughs> but it's a super fun one but yeah red pandas they're not actually related to the giant panda i just think it's one of those coincidences that they were given the same name and in fact the red panda was given its name before the more familiar black and white giant panda, which is rather strange, isn't it? So, but as you can see, super cute. So I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to draw one of these guys. Now, for those of you that haven't done a Draw With Rob video before, this is how they work. Lots of people tell me that they, um, they're not very good at drawing. They don't think they're very good at drawing. They say they can't draw, and I say that's rubbish. Everybody can draw. Some people just need a little bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in. Now that's where I come in because I can help you with that. Because what we're gonna do today is we're gonna break this drawing down into little bite-sized pieces. So little shapes here and there, circles, semicircles, lines, that kind of thing. And I'm gonna show you how to do them all and I'm gonna show you the order in which to do them. So what will happen is I will draw a shape here on my piece of paper. You pause your video and you draw what I draw, okay? Start me up again, I will draw a bit more. Pause me, you draw. I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw. And by the end, I promise you, we're gonna end up with a lovely picture of a very cute red panda that you are gonna wanna stick up on your wall or stick up on your fridge, okay? Now what you're gonna need is a piece of paper 
and a pen or a pencil. That's pretty much it. We're gonna do some coloring later, so if you've got something to color with, that would be great. If you haven't, don't worry, you can just shade with your pencil. But if you have got colors, so much the better. And that's it. So should we start? Should we make a start? Let's do this. Okay. Right, I want you to find the middle of your piece of paper, okay, right in the center. And then I want you to go down a little bit and I want you to draw a horizontal line straight across your piece of paper like that. We need to leave some space on the left and on the right, okay. So how long's that line? Mine's about 15 centimeters long, something like that, okay. The next thing I want you to do is from the left hand end of your line, I want you to come up a little bit, but not vertically. I want you to go in a little bit like that. Okay, slightly curved. Then I want you to come down a little bit in a sort of very sharp point. Then we're gonna go up again in another one of those curves like that. Then guess what? We're gonna come down a little bit again. <laughs> Now this is the trickiest bit, because what we're going to do from this point, we're going to go all the way up and over in a big semicircle, okay? So we're going to go up, like that, start curving around, like that, and try not to smudge, because my left handedness comes into play here. And we're going to come all the way down here towards the other end of our line, and I want you to stop level with that second point that we made. So about there, okay? Then we're gonna try and do a mirror of what we did here. So it's up to you. You can either start from the bottom. I'm gonna extend my line a bit so it's directly underneath that. I'm gonna start from the bottom because I find that easy. I'm gonna come up, come down. I'm gonna go up again and then I'm gonna come down. So there we go. We have basically drawn a great big semicircle but with these two sort of jaggedy bits at either end, okay? And this is the bit that's gonna form the head of our red panda today. Okay. The next thing that I want you to do is, now I'm gonna change my pen here, just cause I've got a slightly thinner one here. We're gonna draw another semicircle, but I want your semicircle to be two or three centimeters inside that semicircle. And this time it's just gonna be a very smooth line. So we're gonna come up and over like this. as I said, two or three centimeters away from the edge, like that. There we go. So sort of a semicircle within a semicircle there. Okay, right. The next thing I want you to do is right in the middle of our semicircles here, I want you to draw an egg shape, but an egg on its side, like that. Right in the center of that semicircle we just drew. And then either side of that egg shape, I want you to draw two circles. One there. So I'm leaving another couple of centimeters or so in between. And then another one there, as close as you can get them in size. We want them to be the same sort of size. And then inside each of these circles, we're gonna draw a smaller circle that we're gonna color in. And you won't be surprised when I tell you that they are our red panda's eyes. And in the middle here, is our red panda's nose. Let's color that in too. There we go. And look, he or she is awake. Now let's finish off this nose and mouth area, shall we? Now I've done quite a lot of animals that I uh, that follow these this kind of format in terms of the nose and the mouth. What we do, we do a vertical line coming straight down from the nose, like that, not very long, a centimeter or so. And at the bottom of that line, we add a little smiley mouth, like that. In fact, I think when we drew the panda, I'm pretty sure that's how we did the panda's nose as well. And a little tip here, to make your animal look extra animalish, we just add some whiskers. And the way we do that is we just add four little dots on either side of the line, like that. And suddenly, it looks very animalish. <laughs> Okay, let's give our red panda some eyelashes. This time I'm just gonna do three little lines at the top of each eye, like that, one, two, three. And I'm also gonna do three little lines at the bottom. Keeping them quite close together, like that. And it's really starting to get a little personality now, this red panda, isn't it? Now they have very interesting markings 
our red pandas. We've already started doing the markings actually, which you probably didn't even realize, but that semicircle there is to denote different colors in the red panda's face. So you'll see that when I come to shade it in later on. But we're gonna add some more markings here, which is very, very interesting and very unique to the red panda. And what we're gonna do first of all is we're just gonna draw a horizontal line directly below each eye, very slightly wider than the eye itself, okay? Just like that. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna join up the two inside points of these lines with yet another semicircle. So we're gonna come up, we're gonna go over the nose and the mouth, very close to it, and then go back down here and join up on that side, like that. And then the other line is going to go up and over as well. We're going to try and keep the distance between the two lines the same. And that means this is going to sort of crash into that top bit like that, which is what we want. Same here, we're just going to go up and over, crash into the top bit like that. So it's almost like a sort of rainbow shape that links the two eyes of our red panda. And that's going to form part of our panda's kind of very unique facial markings. Okay, trust me on this, it's gonna work. Now the eyebrows, you remember I say, I always say this, don't I? If you want to make an animal look extra smiley, we have to add eyebrows quite a long way above the eyes. And in this case, that means in this area here. So we're gonna add a sort of lozenge shape, like that. Above that left eye, and we're gonna do exactly the same above the right eye. There we go a nice, happy looking red panda. Now this is my favorite bit to do next. Red pandas have very distinctive ears and they have very big ears actually. So we're gonna add two great big ears on top of our panda's head right here. This is how we do it. We're gonna start, I want you to start sort of in between the nose. If you imagine a point in between the nose and the right eye, on top of the head there. So imagine an imaginary line, imagine an imaginary line. <laughs> That's lots of imagines there. And at this point here, we are gonna start our ear. It's gonna come up, head up towards the top right, curve round nice and smoothly, and then join back up here. Sorry, I'm a bit sniffly today. I apologize. And then we're gonna try and do a mirror image. So remember, a point in between the nose and the eye. That's our starting point. And we're gonna do a mirror image of that ear there. So we're gonna come around, nice smooth curve, join back up there. See, I told you they've got quite big ears. Now, we need to draw another line. We're gonna basically follow that shape. It's much easier to do this line because we've got a shape to follow. And we're gonna come up and we're gonna go down there. Can you see I've made it, this area is slightly thicker than on this side. Just gives the ear a bit more sort of three-dimensional, three-dimensionalness. <laughs> and then we are gonna do another shape inside. This time we're gonna follow it again, up there. And we're gonna follow it around the top again, just like before, but we're gonna stop about there this time. And then we're gonna add some zigzagging. So we're gonna go up, we're gonna go down. We're gonna go up, we're gonna go down. We're gonna go up and then we're gonna go down. So we've added, we're just sort of echoing these zigzag shapes here, but inside the ear. Let's do a mirror image of it there. We come up, follow it around, then we stop about there. Then we're gonna go up, we're gonna go down. We're gonna go up again, we're gonna go down, up once more, and then down into the, into the head, like that. So we've added sort of another element of this really distinctive patterning on the red panda which is inside their ears okay and that's the head of our red panda cute isn't it it's really cute okay now i'm gonna do a thing which i do sometimes with animals i'm gonna do something called i'm gonna anthropomorphize our animals and that makes them i'm gonna give them slightly more humany characteristics than they do have in real life so in real life Red pandas, they walk around on all fours. They've got these amazing tails, which mean that it's really helped them with their climbing. They spend most of their time, I think, in trees, actually. So they need um, to uh, be really, really good at climbing. So they've got amazing claws. They've got an amazing long tail, which we're gonna draw right at the end, which helps them kind of balance. 
but for our character here, I'm going to do our red panda standing up on two legs, okay? Because I want to give it a sort of slightly human characteristic, which is a very common thing to do when you're drawing cartoons of animals. So let's start with our red panda's tummy. And our panda's going to have a much bigger head than they've got proportionally in real life too, because I want to make it kind of cute and cartoony and a bit kawaii-ish, okay? So what we're going to do is, from sort of level with these two points here, we're going to draw a tummy that comes down goes around like that and then joins up under that point there so a little tummy just like that okay and then for the legs we're going to do two lines that come down pretty much vertically from the bottom of the tummy like that but then i'm going to do little feet that come out i'm just going to give him three or her three little claws like that on the bottom of the foot Let's do a mirror image of that over here. So we come down, we go along, do the other side of the leg first to get the size right. And then again, one, two, three. Now, can you see I've made that leg looks a bit thinner than the other one. So I'm just gonna, remember I say, if you make a mistake or what you think is a mistake, don't screw it up and start again. We're gonna try and correct it with drawing. So I've just tried to balance it up with by changing the thicknesses of the lines to make it a bit more even. I think that works pretty well. But actually, it's often those little imperfections that give our drawing character. I always say this, don't I? But it's totally true. So there we go. Cute, I like it. I'm happy with this. Right, let's give our uh, red panda some arms now. So just, just to the right of where the tummy joins the head, we're gonna draw a curved line that's gonna come down. We're gonna make these arms a bit bigger than the legs. It's going to come down to about there. Let's add some more zigzaggy because we we want to imply that our red panda is nice and furry and cuddly. So a little bit of zigzagging on the end. And then we're going to come back up and join up there. And there's one of our arms and then the other one's going to come down in a mirror image. One, two, three, come round, join back up like that. A little bit of, you know, there we go proper left-handed smudging going on, but that's all right. There we go. There's our red panda's body. And then the final bit is a really fun bit to do because it's that great big tail that I was talking about. So what I want you to do is, from about halfway down the leg, about there, I want you to draw a great big tail. It's gonna go just underneath that arm and it's gonna go all the way over towards the right-hand side of our page curve right up beneath the ear, curl around at the end, head back down towards our red panda's body. We're gonna go behind the arm there like that and then disappear there. And there is our red panda's great big tail. What do you think? Cute, isn't it? Cute and really quite easy to do. And that is all of the outline work for our red panda. So now the really fun part is when we come to colour it in or shading our red panda in. Now, you know the rules we draw with Rob. You don't have to be accurate with the colours for your animal. In fact, sometimes it's really fun to do crazy colouring all over the place. And this is a good one to do that with because you've got lots of areas to shade which you can add lots of different colours. So you could do blue here, red here, yellow here, green here, purple here, you know. You could make yours a properly rainbow coloured red panda. I always pretty much do try and follow nature's color palette when I'm drawing these animals. There's a few exceptions, but usually that's what I do. But you don't have to do what I do. Um, you can do whatever you like and you can add patterns and you know all sorts of things. Now the tail, you'll see the tail is gonna be stripy, but you don't have to do that even. Do whatever you like. The rules are, there ain't no rules. But I'm gonna disappear now for 30 seconds or so and color my red panda in. Um, so I'll see you back here with a lovely colored in drawing. You ready? I'm going in super speed mode as per usual. Here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. There we go. There is my coloured in red panda. 
Oh, that took me quite a long time, this one. I went a bit crazy with the detail here. But can you see what I mean about how, you know, we, when we drew all those different areas, it didn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense. But once it was colored in like this, it really does start to look like a, a red panda. So the color scheme I've gone for is pretty much following, as I said earlier, nature's, mother nature's color palette. So the red panda is pretty red. I mean, the clue is in the name, people. Um, and then we've got this sort of like light beige uh, color here, which is which is what makes up the beautiful stripy tail and then the dark browns here and there mainly in the body is very dark brown and the ears and the tip of the tail and the that funny little rainbow shape we did over the eyes and there we go and I've done my trick I've done a couple of my tricks first of all I've done my shadow trick you know how I love my little shadow trick a uh, little bit of scribble uh, next to the bits that are touching the ground I've used this kind of blue turquoise color on mine but you can just do that with a pencil just a bit of shadow and if you go darker you gradually get darker nearer to the feet it makes it look really kind of three-dimensional and convincing and my other trick is I've added all these little lines that kind of follow the shape and the contours of the head and the body and the tail and they just add to the furriness of your drawing so that's a nice little tip once you've colored it all in just add lots of little lines that sort of follow the shape of the tail or whatever it is that you're drawing and it makes your animal look furrier so I'm very pleased with my little red panda drawing here I hope you are pleased with the way that yours yours have turned out too now of course we need to sign our drawing so I'm going to sign mine down here there's a bit of space down here let's do my full signature this week there we go Rob bit off and that's how you draw a red panda I hope you had fun did you have fun I really had fun so I hope you did too now I want to see your drawings of course I want to see your drawings this is how I see them get your grown-up to take a picture of your drawings and then get them to post it on social media using this hashtag draw with Rob that's the way that I get to see it if you're watching in Facebook you can comment with a picture of your drawing in the comment section below um, but draw with Rob hashtag is probably the best way that I will get to see it and then I will make a grid of all your drawings up at the end of the week a randomly selected grid and I really really can't wait to see your drawings hopefully we've got a few nice not red pandas but rainbow pandas or blue pandas or green pandas or purple pandas I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Now, don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, like, and... Can you like YouTube? I don't think you can like. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Turn the notifications on. That way you'll get to know when a new video comes out. And a really good way to know when a new video comes out is to subscribe to my newsletter. So just go here, robbidolf.com forward slash news, and you'll see a little form. You just put your email address in or your parents' email address in, and then they will get an email telling you when a new video is coming out or when a new book is coming out or when I'm on tour or when you can come and meet me and get me to sign your book, that kind of thing. So get them to subscribe to my newsletter. And if you hang around to the end of this video, I there will be a little clip of me showing Showing you inside the new Draw with Rob Amazing Animals book which this little chap makes a little cameo appearance in as I showed you earlier on. Okay that's about it from me today. I hope you've had fun, as much fun as I have. I'm going to be back very soon with another Draw with Rob video. In the meantime everybody keep on drawing, keep those pencils sharpened, keep on reading books, be kind to everybody you meet and I will see you very soon. Bye, everyone. Hello, everyone. Long time no see. You didn't expect me to pop up again so soon, did you? Um, but I am here just at the end of your video, just quickly to tell you all about this. The brand new Draw With Rob activity book. And it's called Amazing Animals. And that's because it's full of loads and loads of amazingly awesome animals. We have got little ones. We have got whew, big ones. There are animals that live in the sea and of course we've got some animals that live most of their lives up in the sky we have also got lots and lots of really cute ones too 
Now the book is full of loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of things for you to do, including puzzles. Uh, we've got pages where I start the drawings off and you guys get to finish the drawings. We have got lots and lots of colouring action for you to get involved with. Uh, and of course, there's loads of exclusive, never before seen draw-alongs. We've got the frames there for you to do the pictures in. And of course, all the edges of the pages are perforated. So at any point, you can tear your drawings out and pin them up on the wall really easily. And it's a really good thing to display your lovely artwork whenever you can. Um, and then when you get to the end of the book, right at the end here, look, there's a certificate for you to put up on the wall too. You put your name in here and it says that you are an officially, you are officially an amazing animal artist. So there you go. It's a really fun book. It was really, really fun for me to put this one together. And I think you're going to have fun going through the books yourselves and doing all the drawings with me. I hope you are anyway. So listen, this book comes out very soon. It's out on February the 17th, 2022. Um, and you can pre-order it right now from wherever you get your books. So listen, I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. I'm going to be back very soon with another Draw With Rob video. In the meantime, keep those pencils sharpened and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye Rob. <laughs>